we're talking here about Twitter this morning and about um, the potential indigestion for the corporate mm. um, uh, leverage loan market. Um, I'd just be interested, you know, this, this could be the last gasp of, of big deals done in this space uh, for a while here. Do you think it has any relevance to the, to the scale of um, LBO activity that we're likely to see over the rest of the year and into next year? LBO activity is highly dependent on the cost of financing. And as we can see, looking at the LBO numbers on Dealogic, the volume has come down, the number of deals have come down. And until the market can adequately price risk and ingest the volatility that we're seeing, the C-suite is likely to remain very cautious in terms of deal making. Looking at private equity and private equity's contribution to the LBO space, we know that most of the large PE firms are sitting on record high dry powder. However, it comes back to valuations and being able to meet at the right price if we are to see an uptick in, in LBO activity. Ramain, we had a conversation yesterday about where some of the activity was still taking place and it seemed as though some mm. of the uh, big investors were looking for value where they could see it beaten up areas mm. of uh, various sectors. But if I look at uh, your rankings today, it feels as though we've come off some of the higher end of the ranges in deal making in certain sectors that we had last year, but still the same trends remain. It's uh, technology, it's healthcare, it's utility and energy is the top ones. And what does it tell us about the long term M&A picture for some of these sectors? Yeah, um, right now it's, it's very interesting if we were to look ahead over the next six to 12 months and, and to see where things have gone. But looking at our report which you recently released, global IV revenue fell 40%. It's down to $59.6 billion. And just to put that into context, the last fall of that magnitude was during the global financial crisis. M&A revenue is down. Um, however, it's down just 7% in Europe. So it's held up relatively well. And we can look at regions such as the Middle East and, and even Africa, where it's up 10%. So there's still activity taking place in some um, areas of the market. Going back to your point, tech, healthcare, energy, and utility is definitely the harbinger of, of, of deals right now. But one thing that would be really interesting to observe over the next few months is the impact of sterling's depreciation. Could this create a catalyst for inbound acquisitions for British companies, perhaps companies who might have been considering an IPO and have been holding off for the right time? We saw a very similar trend in Japan earlier this year following the yen's depreciation. And if we look at Japanese M&A revenues, those are actually up 3% so far this year. In terms of where there could continue to be activity, I think work collaboration software companies seem to be in vogue right now. And I think that is an area of technology which is in the fashion. We can think of companies such as Zoom, Ring Central, Asana, or even a company like Figma. Companies that provide technologies that enable remote and hybrid working has never been in more demand.